poor community of El Carmen where the guys are working on the trucks because it's a, a major highway from Puebla north to the United States. So you see all of these trucks and the guys are dumping the crankcase oil out on the ground and there's old bits and pieces of metal all over the place. And it's, it's a classic industrial city in, in Mexico. Not much to say about it in terms of the beauty of a place and a wonderful place to live. In fact, uh, it's so poor that they have 17 different species of cactus they include in salads. The people in Mexico had heard about the technology and we looked at the solely somber wetlands. So they got a sense of what was possible. The local priest recognized that this community of 14,000 people was literally flushing their toilets into this magnificent lake. And so he could see something needed to be done. And the governor, Alvarez Lima, had picked this community because he knew that it wasn't just the technology, it also had to have community leadership, in this case provided by this local priest. Indudablemente que al principio ellos no entendían que era una planta de aguas residuales. Ellos creían que estaba bien que estuvieran echando el drenaje y había un verdadero lago de contaminación. Tenemos eh, como cuarta causa de muerte las enfermedades diarreicas, los desequilibrios hidroelectrolíticos de, de los niños especialmente. Con mucha frecuencia se levantan tolvaneras. Esto llega a las casas, esto llega a la comida que está al aire libre, esto llega al agua que no se hierve y entonces agrava el problema. Most places in the world just push their wastewater out of the town. What we needed to do was to follow the passive model of Soli Sombra and say, look, let's build something here that's local labor, local materials, and ideally has no electrical requirements whatsoever. What it means for development is that the money is staying in the community. Now, the U.S. Department of Commerce is very happy with this kind of economic development model because we're not exporting U.S. technology or equipment. But if you look at the alternative for a place like Mexico, they can't afford the equipment and they can't afford the energy, which is the biggest part of this. The pounds of carbon that we take out of the wastewater is one measure of performance. Well, for every pound of carbon we take out of the wastewater, we're putting four pounds of carbon into the atmosphere to generate the electricity and in, in using coal or fossil fuels to run the wastewater treatment plant. There's a pollution cost there, an efficiency cost. But the other one is, it's just simply that if you're a country like Mexico, you can't even afford the electricity if you're a municipality. And this is the kind of stuff that a little system like Soli Sombra starts off. It's passive, it's absolutely energy free. There's no machinery required. And to me, that's the goal. That's the ideal every time I design a wastewater treatment system. At that point, I have a lot of doubt about will it work? Will it give us the results we are proposing? But I was very skeptical. But ya con que volvamos a la naturaleza, el agua que nos da tan limpia, ya es un gran milagro. We have two million gallons of water that flow through this treatment plant on a daily basis. Now, that takes a lot of land to do that, right? We had to find the land to make this happen. And through this process, we were able to buy about 900 acres of wetlands. The Corps of Engineers has jumped on, DEQ has jumped on, EPA has jumped on, and they've said, what we've done here is a, is a model for other cities to look at. So we have this product called wastewater that if we cleanse it and manage it, to become an actual nutrient provider. We can systematically put it into the wetlands, monitor it, and make sure that we don't have too much growth, we don't have too little growth. Amazing story, and in my opinion, it's the first really big restoration project using municipal wastewater as a resource, rather than quote unquote as wastewater. 